Hello, I'm Brandon Lee, and today's video is going to be all about Lawa's brand new 10 millimeter f2.8 autofocus lens for full frame. And right now I'm using it on my Sony a7S III. This is probably the widest lens I've ever tried to actually shoot with. And it is fully autofocus, so I'm able to track myself as I film. This is totally not a focal length that I would use for most normal video shooting, but I was really curious just to see what kind of results I would get. So let's go out, do some tests, and see how they turn out. And just so you know, Lawa did send me this lens to try out for free, but this is not a sponsored video, and all my opinions here will be my own. For comparison to see just how wide this lens is, I have my iPhone on top and my a7S III on the bottom, and the iPhone is on the 13 millimeter wide angle lens, and the a7S III is, of course, using the 10 millimeter Lawa. So with the 10 millimeter lens, I'm getting a lot more in my frame. It's a lot wider than 13 millimeters on the iPhone. The gimbal I'm using here is my DJI RS3 Mini and the lens balances up just fine on it. It feels very comfortable because it's a fairly short lens, so you won't have any issues balancing up this lens on most gimbals. For the first shot, I'm going into my custom mode of my gimbal and I'm enabling only the tilt axis. So that allows me to tilt up as I move forward without worrying about the gimbal accidentally panning side to side. Next, I'm putting the gimbal in full lock mode so it doesn't follow my pan or my tilt, and then I'm just gonna walk perpendicular to the side of the temple, getting a nice profile tracking shot. I like the little bit of sun flares that I'm getting in these shots. Just stumbled into this place. This is called Haven. This is an indoor playground and it's made all of bamboo. So this is a great place to go get the kids off of their phones and out doing something real. This lens actually has a crazy close minimum focus distance, so that opens up some interesting opportunities for nearly macro type shots. Now I'm in an abandoned phone booth and I'm gonna get a shot that starts really close on the phone and sort of pulls down like this and then pulls back. And it's gonna look like a much bigger move because of how wide the lens is. There's a really nice looking bike here behind me and I wanna get a shot where I pull the camera back through the bike. And I'm gonna teach you a really quick focus trick about how to do shots like this. So in this shot, I want the background to start out of focus and then I want the focus to track the bike as I move back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on the bike up really close and then switch over to manual focus because I have a custom key that switches from manual to autofocus. It's just a tap of one of the keys on the back of my camera. I will start in manual focus, I'll start my move back, and then I'm gonna switch over to autofocus at the beginning of the shot as soon as the bike comes into frame. Then the autofocus will continue to track the bike. Now I'm gonna take a minute to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Audio. So Audio is a music and sound effects service, and I've been using them on a lot of my videos lately. All of the music that you heard in this video came from Audio, and the Audio Pro subscription offers unlimited downloads, and you can use the music and the sound effects in almost any type of media, including client work. One feature I've been using a lot is stems. So for almost every piece of music in Audio, you can choose to download specific instruments. So for instance, if I like this song, but I specifically want to use those sort of processed vocals separately, then I can just download the vocals and work them into my soundtrack. On other music platforms, you can usually only download the stems for some of the music, and the variations of the stems might not be exactly what you want. So if this got you interested in audio, then use my link in the description of this video, and you will get 70% off your first year of Audio Pro. So you get unlimited music downloads, unlimited sound effects, and you also get to use that Link Match AI feature. Now I'm doing a static shot in a cafe and it looks like an extreme long shot, like the camera's actually really far away from me. But just to give you an idea of how close it is, I'm gonna use my iPhone and using the 1X lens, now I'm filming the a7S III and you can see it's actually quite close. Here's a different background, same basic thing. Camera's about two and a half meters away from me and I'm getting an extreme wide angle. 
I wanna try one more little experiment here, which is letterboxing. So let's crop the top and the bottom and see how the framing looks then. You're definitely not gonna get a normal perspective with this lens, but depending on what you're shooting, it might just be the look that you're going for. So now it's nighttime. I'm at a bar and I wanted to test out the low light capabilities of this lens and also see how the perspective looks in a different kind of environment. Let's talk about that low light performance. This is an f2.8 lens, which means that I get pretty good low light performance, but not quite as good as an f1.8, which is my preferred aperture when shooting at night. Now I'm at a cute little bar restaurant that has some overhead sort of Edison bulb lighting, and I'm at ISO 2000 here. Now here I am in a dark parking lot, and the only way I got a decent exposure here is by boosting up the ISO and using the a7S III's high base ISO of 12,800. So if you don't have a dual base ISO camera, you won't be able to get this bright of an exposure with this lens. Now I am back on my gimbal. I'm at a shopping center, going up a flight of stairs, and you can see how the whole area looks from above. Okay, time for a few final overall thoughts on this lens. First of all, is this a lens that I would use every day? Of course not. It's 10 millimeters. It's extremely wide. It's a specialty lens, but it might have its place for certain shots where I want an extremely stylized look or where it's just incredibly hard to keep the subject properly framed. Like if I was using a gimbal and filming something completely out of control, like a sports game or like some kids playing around in the yard, then maybe I would use this lens and crop it in in post to reframe things. Otherwise, I could see myself using this lens for POV type shots as a helmet cam. It's good for worm's eye view, really low angle shots, and it's good for macro shots where I want a really unique perspective. The autofocus really does come in handy, especially when I'm filming myself like this or when I'm doing selfies walking around on a gimbal, walking and talking. It is really nice to not have to manually focus. And the low light performance is decent enough. It's f2.8, which means that if I'm willing to boost my ISO high enough or even jump to that higher base ISO, I can shoot in pretty much any light and get a decent image. One situation where this lens might be really useful is letterboxing. If I'm going for an ultra widescreen look and I still want a really wide perspective, because when you crop the top and the bottom of the frame with the letterbox, you tend to narrow your field of view. So by going even wider when I shoot, I still retain a whole lot of field of view when I crop it in. And another benefit of adding those letterbox bars is that it covers up some of the distorted parts of my image. So overall, it looks a little bit more normal. So my overall recommendation for this lens is that you should get it if you're looking for a really unique perspective, you wanna do some crazy, interesting shots that you couldn't get with any other lens, and you want the convenience of autofocus. Otherwise, to be honest, it's not a lens that you would ever need in your video kit for any normal kind of shooting. Okay, so this has been my first look at Lawa's very unique 10mm f2.8 lens. Link will be in the description. Otherwise, please click like, subscribe. I'm Brandon Lee. I'll see you next time.